Tesla Shanghai delivered 77,695 vehicles in May, which was more than what I predicted. Sheesh moment right there. Now this number does include exports out of China, but most of the time all those vehicles do, do have a name on it. So one way or the other, it's gonna get delivered or sold. Let's go ahead and make an update on this for Shanghai, Fairmount, Berlin, and Texas to see what the Q2 deliveries will be. I do this every month on this channel. So um, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then what are you guys doing, man? All right, let's get down to it. Smash that like button and obviously subscribe if you guys haven't already. Let's go. Alrighty, starting with Shanghai. Daily production for Shanghai is between 2,600 to 3,000. It varies month to month. Sometimes there's days off that we don't know. It just happens. So the range is between 2,600, but the max capacity they can do right now is 3,000 a day. For April, we have almost 76,000 vehicles deliveries. May, just recently, 78,000 vehicle deliveries. In June, I'm going to say 2,600 vehicles produced every single day because it looks like they don't have any days off in June. And with that, we get obviously 78,000 vehicles del production and over 153,000 vehicle in deliveries. I made them separate here because at the end, we do take a delivery rate out of the production, a percentage of that. So it doesn't make sense to add the deliveries to that as well. Well and then do it that that's just taking that's 2xing the number it's just it doesn't make any sense so i have them separated over here so yes i'm predicting for june production for shanghai is gonna be close to 80,000, 78,000. maybe there is a holiday here and there that we don't know but if you know comment down below curious to know moving on to fremont on a daily production they do about 1700 vehicles for april 1700 times 30 days it looks like there is no days off in april in california so that's 51,000 vehicles being produced in may there was one day off which was memorial day so we do the same thing we did in april and we get 51,000 vehicles being produced in june there was one day off there as well in the u.s so we multiply 1700 by 29 days we get over 49,000 vehicles being produced overall for Q2 production levels in Fairmont over 151,000 vehicles. Berlin, as you guys already know, Berlin is doing 5,000 weekly in production starting in April. So that's about 20,000 vehicles with two days off in April. So sheesh. In May, I increased it by 50 to 750 vehicles being produced daily compared to 700, which would give you the 5,000 weekly. And with three days off, we get 21,000 vehicles being produced. In June, close to 800 most likely mid june or mid this month we're going to be around the 850 mark which would be 6000 vehicles being produced weekly so look looking forward to that i think that this will be next week or the week after that so let's see what's going to happen but with 800 vehicles being produced daily and no days off that's about 24000 vehicles being produced overall for q2 berlin produced almost 65000 vehicles so that is a record obviously now moving on to texas texas very interesting in may they reached 5000 vehicles production weekly as well so not moving as fast as berlin but moving to the right direction but let's start off with april in april there was two days off and we do 600 multiply that by 28 days that's about almost 17,000 vehicles man berlin texas and fairmont they don't they don't give out information just like how shanghai does like deliveries and production numbers like come on man come on like where are you guys at? like come on learn from the chinese for once you know it'd be helpful to us as investors but okay moving on to may in may they reached the 5,000 a week in production and there's no days off in texas either so that's about 21,000 vehicles being produced and in june I increased it 50 production daily to 750 vehicles as well as subtracting two days because they have two days off in June and that's about 21,000 vehicles being produced. Overall, that's a production number almost reaching 59,000 vehicles for Texas in Q2. Again, a record. Total production excluding May and April for Shanghai, it's about almost reaching 353,000 vehicles. I'm going to give this an 85% delivery rate because looking at the inventory chart in the US, then Model 3 is not selling. Despite discounts and all that, it's just not selling. Everyone's going straight to Model Y, which makes sense. I mean, when I was looking at the prices in Canada for Model 3 and Model Y, 
If there's not much difference between them, I might as well buy the Y, <laughs> right? That's why I put an 85% delivery rate and we get almost 300,000 vehicles being delivered. And if we add the Shanghai, April and May deliveries, it's about 400, over 453,000 vehicle deliveries, which is about almost six or 7,000 more than what I predicted just last month. So this is fantastic. If we go ahead and add it here in the yearly chart, that's about 876,000 vehicles if this number becomes true. So let's see what's going to happen by end of this month. Actually, we're going to find out what, what Tesla did end of end of end beginning of next month. That's going to be very interesting to see what Tesla's full production and delivery numbers are going to be for Q2. And obviously I'll do, I'll do an update video on that as well. But right now let's see what the stock price would be if this number becomes true. If you guys are ready, smash that like button. Let's go. So here are the Tesla stock price prediction chart on the quarterly. Pretty much what I did was that I already filled in the numbers from the credits to the services to the leasing, even to the gross profits really, even to the energy to operating expenses, operating margin to the revenue, to the net income gap and non-gap and the EPS share to standing, all of it to the PE, which we'll figure out at the end. But what we are looking for is the EPS non-gap. Right now, Yahoo Finance and the market has around 78 cents, which is just I don't understand how they get 78 cents, but uh, this is the number that we are trying to get, whether it's a beat or not, right? So 78 cents, let's say 80 cents, that's the EPS that the market or the uh, or Wall Street is saying that Tesla should do in Q2. Let's see if that'll happen or not. So let's start off with, well, let's go ahead and add the delivery number here and see, because all this formula comes in together nicely. So what is it? 453,332, all right? And bam, look at that. Look at all the numbers come in. One thing that I want you guys to take a note is the average vehicle selling price. I increased it to 45,000 because they did increase the Model Y, the S and X, not so much of the three, but they've increased it, the Model Y and the S and X multiple times, a few times actually. So I think that the average selling price should come up to 45,000. I'll be, I'll be, I will be a little bit shocked if it's below Q1 to be honest, but I don't think that's going to be the case. So 45,000 with a 18 and a half percent vehicle gross profits. We get total vehicle profits of over almost $3.8 billion. We got the total energy and the profits as well with the operating cost and taxes. So if you add and subtract all those together, we get a total revenue for Q2 over $25 billion. Income from operations almost reaching 3 billion. Operating margin of 11.8%. Net income gap of almost reaching 2.8 billion stock based compensation if you add that on top that'll be almost 3.2 billion dollars for non gap which if you want to get the EPS that's about 91 cents so so far it's beating Wall Street's expectations by about 13 cents so are we gonna see an update for sure every time before there's an earnings report for Tesla a week or 10 days before they increase it they did it last quarter and they did the quarter before that and they'll do it this quarter again. They're probably going to say 88 cents or 89 cents. Maybe they'll even say 95 cents if they're trying to be so bullish or trying to bring the stock down. But 91 cents looks like it. That's what's going to happen. Moving on to Q3. For Q3, originally I had it 465,000. But then I realized that if Q2 is going to be over 450,000 in deliveries, most likely in Q3 because... It looks like it, guys. It looks like we may be skipping a recession. And the fact that people are spending, I mean, jobs numbers are coming out. It's absolutely insane, especially in this market with high interest rates. I swear, by end of this year, something's going to break if they don't slowly reduce interest rates in a few months time, at least end of this year. But if things are going the way things are now, then I increased the delivery numbers from 465,000 to 490,000 in Q3. Call me crazy, man, whatever. That's what I think that could happen with an average selling price of 45,000 and a half. Again, a little bit more of a price increase. Not too sure if that's going to happen or not, but just throwing it out there, being a bit more bullish. That'll give us a total vehicle revenue of $22.3 billion. Vehicle gross profits of 18.8%. That will give us a total vehicle profits of almost $4.2 billion. Got the energy, got the operating costs and taxes. Total revenue of almost $27.5 billion. Income from operations over $3.4 billion. Operating margin 12.5%. 
I mean, that would be insane if that happens in Q3. Very nice. Total net income gap will be almost 3.2 billion. Add the stock based composition on that. That'd be 3.6 billion almost. With that, we get an EPS of a dollar and four cents non gap. Now let's move on to Q4. Now, if Q4, if Q3 they do 490,000, I'm going to say in Q4, they're going to do 525,000 deliveries. Berlin and Austin are coming in clutch. And I increased the average selling price to 46,000 because of the Cybertruck. Won't make too much of a dent, but um, if they're gonna start, the average selling price is gonna increase for sure. Operating gross profits, I'm not too sure if it's gonna be 19.2% because I know ramping the Cybertrucks are gonna be costly. So I'm not too sure if 19.2%, I think that's too bullish in my opinion, but hey, let's see what's gonna happen. That'll give us a total of vehicle profits of over 4.6 billion, energy and operating expenses, all that kind of stuff, subtract and add, total revenue of almost $30 billion. Then it come from operations, almost 4 billion, operating margin 13.3%. I mean, that would be insane if that happens. A uh, sheesh moment right there. That would give us a net income of 3.7 billion. If you add the stock based compensation, over 4 billion. That's insane. That would be an EPS non gap of $1.18, which would be a total EPS for 2023 of $3.51, which would be 7 cents lower than 2022. Absolutely a sheesh moment, but let's see what will happen. I think we're going to be surprised in a good way. Now let's figure out what the stock price would be. If you guys are ready, then why isn't that sm like button smash, man? Come on. Let's go. So right now, Tesla stock is around the mid 250s, I think 240s right now. That would be an PE of 72, 244, let's just say. What a turn of events, huh? I and mean, this was 50 PE not too long ago. Now it's 72. That's insane. Now in Q2, if they come out and they beat, I could still see it hovering around the 70s, which would be 247 bucks per share. However, though, if the operating margin comes in higher than last quarter, this will run up easily to 75 or maybe even 80. I think 80 is a bit too much, to be honest. I think 75 would make sense because the, since the EPS aren't too far apart from each other, the PEs will stay relatively the same maybe actually 75 maybe a bit too much maybe just 74 around there but in q3 if operating margin keeps increasing and they keep bringing record net income numbers and revenue and they beat earnings expectation then i would say 75 pe would make sense that seems to be around the 263 mark now guys make note here eps total yearly eps it is dipping down because last quarter in q3 they've made more money they, their eps was more than what it is now in q3 because of the price cuts and all which is why it's dipping but because it's dipping we can see the pe actually go even higher because there's more expectation for the stock they're saying that in 2024 tesla stock is going to be monstrous the earnings and revenue are going to be monstrous i mean <laughs> heck yeah it's gonna be monstrous so we can even probably see an 80 pe which would be 280 bucks per share, which would be just absolutely in flippant insane. If that's insane, what's gonna be Q4? If they do over 500,000 vehicles in deliveries. And again, if we see the EPS, it is up by one cent. So this could actually trigger more of a rally. And if we continue the ADPE, that'd be 281 bucks per share. But if we continue this bull market, because it looks like we are in this bull rally right now, I'm not too sure if it's a bull trap or not. I really don't know. but. If we continue this bull run up until year end and they do these numbers, we can easily see a PE of maybe 85, probably even going to the 90s, probably breaking to the hundreds. 350 year end? I don't know. Too good to be true in my opinion. I'm going to keep it at 85 to 90 max. That's where I think it's going to happen. 316 bucks per share with a market cap exceeding 1 trillion with a 90p. That's absolutely insane. Or just right below it at 298 and a market cap of $973 billion. So really realistic price ranges from now till end of the year is going to be 260 to 300 per share if we continue this bull rally, which is absolutely insane. I mean, we could go back down to maybe the low 200s and if it does, obviously I'm gonna buy more shares. There's a lot of good news coming out with Tesla that will increase Tesla's revenue and profits for next year and the year after that. And I think Wall Street is realizing this and so they want to pay more of a premium now for them. So, end of the year, realistic price ranges in maybe 260 to 300. Again, it's all a price prediction and a prediction alone. Nothing is 
set here so take all this with a grain of salt but hold on there what's interesting here is the total deliveries of all of 2023 almost reaching 1.9 million so that's interesting they said 1.8 but here we're getting almost 1.9 if these numbers become true if they become true so let's see what happens this quarter and the next one and the next one all i know is exciting times it's the reason why i'm going all in this is the only reason why i'm going all in tesla stock i love their mission statements i love what they stand for i love the company i love the stock i love their products i just love tesla man let's flip and go but there you guys have it early july is when we're gonna get the full q2 tesla's deliveries and production so really Deliveries, 400, over 453,000 vehicles. If that's the case, that means production would be closer to 470, 480,000. So we'll see. Comment down below what your delivery numbers and production numbers are. I'm curious to see and know because I am a curious person. But if you're a curious person and you want to know when Tesla will do their first buyback because they did say a buyback is on the table and I do think they will do a buyback sooner than later. Here's the video for that. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. And support a channel, man, by becoming a channel member. Join the gang, man. Come on. And subscribe, and I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.